third talk is entitled Relevant Representations for the Inference of Rational Stochastic Tree Languages and it's being uh, presented by uh, Amory Akbar. Thank you. So this work is a joint work with François Denis and Faisal Wadi from the LIF Marseille and with Edouard Gilbert and Marc Thomasy from Inéa Lille. And here I'm interested in a theoretical work about learning stochastic language over trees. And in fact, this approach is a generalization of the algorithm that uh, Ricard talked before in the algorithm we did in 2006. And this is a generalization to the tree, uh, to trees. And in fact, this algorithm, in the case of trees, has some drawbacks. I mean, that representation that is used for learning the um, structure of the model may be not relevant for using the model as a generative model, for example, over things. And this is the contribution of this paper to discuss this point. So after introducing some basics about the framework we're working on, I, will, I chose to spend a long time about the canonical linear representation for rational tree series and the algorithm <coughs> to learn this canonical representation. But this is a work we did before. And then I will discuss the drawbacks of these representations. And this is where our contributions come. And I will present a new representation of this canonical representation, which is normalized. I will, uh, talk, I will discuss after what, what I, need, I mean by this. I will also discuss about the notion of consistency of this kind of models and, sh and saying that maybe the better way to study that is to define a strong, cons strongly consistent model. And the last point is to notion with unwrong trees, because when you are working on, for example, XML data or some web data, in general, you are working with alphabet, alphabets where the ranks of the symbols are not fixed. And then it is interesting to study the application of these things. And we talk about the representation of trees that, that are relevant for that. So the problems. To, in the majority of my talk, I will consider wrong trees. That means that they are defined over uh, symbols that are functional symbols, where the number of children is fixed for every symbol. So for example here, I have two symbols, f and a. f is an arity of two, and a is a constant with arity zero. The second point is stochastic languages. And what we want to do is to learn distribution of a, a set of trees, such that for every tree, the probability is between zero and one and the sum of all the probabilities of all the trees must sum up to one, okay? And in fact, stochastic languages are a special case of what we call formal power tree series, where you associate a real number to any tree of, we can, we can uh, define over t over f. So our work will stand in this class of representation. So the basic problem is, a common one in probabilistic grammatical inference. You have a sample of trees that are supposed to be generated from an unknown distribution P. And what you want to do is that given this sample of trees, you want to infer a good approximation of P. And in general, you do it in the, some class of representation. The most common one is a probabilistic tree automata, which is often used. But this is, we, here we focus on another one, which is called <coughs> linear representation of rational tree series, which is in fact a strict uh, greater uh, representation than probabilistic two automata, and I will present it just before, just after three. So a little recall about probabilistic two automata. These are funny state machines that can encode probabilistic uh, languages. Here is an example. Uh, I have an automata with only one state Q. I have a set of transitions, Q, which is gives gay with probability alpha, and q, which gives fq q with probability 1 minus alpha. I have the final probability here. And this language is parameter according to alpha. I draw detail here how we can compute probabilities to trees. I guess anybody is a bit aware of that here. But the thing here is that when we're working with trees, it's a more complex than for the string case. And one thing here is that if alpha is strictly less than 1 over 2, then this automaton does not define a stochastic language. Okay? And in the general case, it is not easy to, to know if a probabilistic automaton defines a stochastic language or not in the case of trees. But if we work with something we, we, which is the average tree size, then we can decide if a um, probabilistic automaton defines a stochastic language with bounded average size. 
And this is what I will call later the strong consistency in the, in the following of my, of my presentation. Um, so in the next representation are the linear representation of rational tree languages. And in fact, it's a generation of probabilistic automata. Uh, if we define it in this case, we'll consider a triple V mu lambda, where V is a finite dimensional vector space of R. And in fact, it's a, if I make the link with probabilistic two automata, the dimension of V is linked with the number of states on the probabilistic automata. Okay? And in fact, a basis of V will correspond to a state in the probabilistic automata. The mu function, it is in fact, in this formalism, a p linear mapping. It means that in fact, you define a mapping for any symbol in the alphabet. And if the reality is p, you say that it is a p linear mapping. This simply <coughs> corresponds in fact to the transition function. And the final lambda is in fact the same thing as the finite probability. And when you compute the value of a tree, you apply mu over t and the result is applied to lambda, you have the probability of the tree. Here is the representation of the previous automaton in the linear representation. So in fact, I choose the v, which is here for simplicity r. I have a basis e1, which is the basis of r. And then I define the mu function, which is the same thing as the transition, so except here that it's defined with e1. So this uh, mu of a is equal to alpha e1, and this probability is equal to 1 minus alpha e1. The final probability is one, and then I can define exactly the same distribution over the trees. And in fact, this, this representation can be equivalently represented by what we call weighted true automata, or multi cv true automata, which are the same. And in fact, the difference is that you allow the automaton to have negative parameters to define the transitions. Uh, so what are rational stochastic tree language? These are stochastic languages that can be represented by a rational, by a linear representation. The thing that Every stochastic language that will be completed by a probabilistic automaton is a rational stochastic language, but some rational stochastic language cannot be completed by a probabilistic automaton. This means that this class is a greater class than probabilistic automaton. Okay? So this is interesting to work in this class. Uh, the counterpart is that it is not decidable whether a linear representation represents a stochastic language or not. So we can do, do get to deal with that. And as I said before, a rational stochastic language can be equivalently represented by a weighted true automaton. And the interest of this approach is that since we are looking for a basis, which is the number of states, the size of this automaton is minimal in the number of states, uh, according to the fact that you want to represent a uh, distribution with a finite state machine. Um, so I will now present how we define the canonical representation for this model. And just before that, a little recap about residual languages which are a key notion in, in, or in grammatical inference in general. So when you work of, um, in a regular language, a residual language, u minus one L, is a set of strings V such that uv is in R. And if you translate it to the notion of series, you can define operators u dot such that u dot R applied to a string V is the value of the string uv for the series R. Okay, this can be defined in operator. And this is interesting because there are intrinsic components of the language, and we can easily observe the values on the, on the sample because you have to count the number of strings that are the prefix u, for example. In the tree case, the residual language are defined according to context. A context is a tree which has exactly one special symbol dollar, uh, which appears at the leaf of the tree, and from that you can define a concatenation operator, C bracket T where you change the dollar symbol which appears in C by the tree T here. You just make a substitution of the symbol by the tree. Okay. So when I work on a tree series, I can define an operator C dot for any context C, such that C dot R is the value of the series R for the tree C bracket T. Okay. So this is an example here. And the interesting fact here is to consider the set WR, which is the set that is defined by the series C dot R. And you have a theorem, you say that if R is a rational language, then the dimension of WR is finite. And so the idea to define a canonical representation is to find a basis of C dot R and then define a canonical representation with that. But the problem is that, in fact, we don't know how to link 
this set and linear representations. We don't know how to define linear representations of according to context. Maybe it is possible, but we don't know how to do that. So the idea is to consider the dual space of WR. That means linear, uh, linear forms of a C dot R. And in this case, we can define operators with trees, which is defined as T bar. And an op a T bar operator applied to a series C dot R is in fact the value of the series R for the tree C bracket T. Okay, so I define here operators of a tree. And the fact that the set of T bars span the dual space, and since the dimension of WR is finite, the dimension of WR star is finite, and then I define the canonical representation according to the dual space. And the basis, I will look for trees, T bar, that define the basis, and since I will work on samples, I can easily look at the trees that can define my basis in the dual space. So I will give a little example how to find this basis. So I will define a, log, a stochastic language P, which is uh, defined according to this one. And I chose here two times P two thirds minus P three quarters. You can check that this language P is a stochastic language. And to simplify the procedure, I will suppose to have an oracle <coughs> which helps me to compute the things. It is a bit more simple. So I can ask the properties of trees according to this language. And now the question is, how can I find the basis of my dual space? So I suppose to have a total order of the trees, okay, according to the height of the tree. And I consider the first tree, which is my constant A. I want to know if A bar is null or not. So I ask the oracle, and the oracle says, no, this is not null, because if you take the context dollar, you can see that PA is not null. So this means that A bar match be my basis. Now the next tree that I have to consider is FAA bar, and I will ask the oracle to know if it's in my basis or not. And what I want to do is, if these are collinear, that means that for every context, the probability of C bracket FA is equal to an alpha, the probability of P uh, C bracket A. Okay. And the oracle said me no, because if you take two contexts, C1 dollar and C2 this one, and you compare the probability of PA and PFA and the probability of PA and PFAA, these are not, uh, sorry, this one, these are not the same relationship, so these are not collinear. And then this means that FAA bar must be in my basis. Okay? No, I, I continue with the, in fact, I, I will consider the frontier set that we use in general in grammatical inference. So I built the new tree, this one, and I want to know if it is collinear to these two elements that are in my basis. I ask the oracle, and the oracle, yes, they are. And here is the linear relationship between these, between F A A F A F A A bar and A bar and F A bar. So this means that this tree does not belong to the basis, and this relationship will in fact help me to define the mu operators with, for defining transitions later. Uh, now I continue with the frontier set. I, I test this tree, and the answer of the oracle is still yes. This is the relationship, and the last tree, this one. And the answer is also yes, this is the linear relationship here. And then once I've done that, I can be defined a linear representation for my tree series. This is this one. So the basis is that. I define the mu uh, uh, relations for the basis like this. And then these of the mu relations are defined according to the linear relationship that were given by the oracle. Okay? And then I can compute lambda, and this is my representation. If you look at this one, I have some negative parameters, but also the point is that the, I will see later in another representation, but the parameters are not normalized. I mean, they're not sum up to one, that's just like in probabilistic automata, for example. So this is a bad point. Uh, just before, uh, how do we do it in practice from a sample? Well, we have an algorithm which is very close to the algorithm that diffuse set merging approach. So instead of that, we are looking for linear relationships between states rather than merging states. And to what the key point is to uh, assess the relationship between candidate S bar and the elements of the basis here. And to do that, you can use the empirical distribution of your sample and to see that if you can build for every context uh, linear inequality to say that the empirical distribution of C dot S is uh, close to the relationships of the basis, according to alpha, if it's true, then you mean that 
uh, S is collinear to the T in the basis. Okay? And if you choose some good values, you can prove that your algorithm covers in the limit. So this is an algorithm we've done before. But there are some drawbacks here. And the fact, first fact that in the model that we output, the states, I mean, which correspond to the elements of the basis, do not define stochastic language in, div in general. This is a bad point. I mean, the global model is a stochastic language, but each state taken individually is not a stochastic language. Or may not in general. The second thing that the parameters are not normalized. And the last thing is that before the convergence, the model that is output by the algorithm is not, may maybe not a stochastic language. Uh, so this where our contributions come. So this is the representation of the same uh, linear function that before in the formalism of uh, weighted true automaton. And to simplify it, I have only one state here. This is, in fact, the final priorities here. And this is the transitions that are associated with the state Q0 and the transition from the state Q1. And if you sum up, for example, the, all the weights of the transition that have Q0 in the left, 1 plus this one plus this one plus this one, you see that it's not summed up to 1. Okay? So if you want to use this model for gener generate trees according to the distribution, this is not very easy and not maybe relevant. So what we have proved is that if you have a rational stochastic language, then there exists another basis where you can represent the same language with the same size, such that each state defines a stochastic language, and the weights of the transition are, norm are normalized. And the, no the normalized representation is this one. And if you, I, I guess you will trust me, but if you uh, sum the parameters here, they are equal to one. Okay. Uh, the other point is that we have another property is that for every pair of a state on the left hand side and a symbol f, you sum up all the transitions that, for example, for state q0 that have the symbol f, and the weights of all these four transitions is greater or equal than zero. Uh, so we give a method for computing this normalization in practice in the, in the paper. And the other problem is that we have still negative weights in this representation, and this is we have to deal with it because this is the interest of the model. This is the way we can have a greater expressiveness than probabilistic automata. And to deal with that, we give a specific generation algorithm to use the model as a generative model. And this, this uh, algorithm relies on this property here to select the symbols that can be generated after. The second point is the consistency. And to study that, we think that the better way of defining consistency is to consider this uh, quantity, which is called the bony diverse tree size, and we have a theorem where, for any consistent, uh, strongly consistent or stochastic language, if we consider the expectation matrix, which is the same as that is defined for the probabilistic context-free languages, where you uh, built the expectation of the non-terminal to be used in the derivations, this is the same object. And if you construct this matrix from the normalized representation, then the value spectral is strictly less than one. Okay. Uh, there is a little errors in the paper. We are missing some hypothesis in one property. So I invite you to look at this technical report in the web. And this technical report is cited in the proceedings. So we can easily find the correction. And the last thing is the application to run round trees. So if you're working on a tree, the, RIT, the number of children of an assembler F is not fixed. OK. And so uh, the idea is we can convert this unwrong tree into a wrong tree representation. This can be do done in linear near time. And there is a big junction between this representation and this representation <coughs> here. Uh, so for example, the root of the tree is here. It corresponds to this node here. And the, this symbol for root tree 2 corresponds to the notion of adding a new child to the root of the tree. So here I uh, this symbol correspond to this symbol here, this symbol correspond to this symbol here, and this subtree correspond to this subtree here. So we can prove there is a bijection between these two representations, and we can also prove that there is, a basic, there is an equivalence between wrong tree series <coughs> and a wrong tree series, and you can have an algorithm for transforming one series into another series in linear time. So the idea, if you want to apply our approach to unwrong trees, you just transform this tree to an, a wrong tree representation, learn the, the, the model, and then use it in the wrong turn and wrong series as, as you wish. So this means that this still works with unwrong trees. So as a conclusion, we have an algorithm which is called DS. We 
uh, is interesting for learning Gaussian statistic languages that are a greater class than probabilistic, lang than probabilistic language that are, can be encoded by probabilistic automata. And they are in general provide min minimal models, I mean, less models with a um, lower size than probabilistic automata. But this algorithm has some drawbacks, and in this paper, we, we investigate some problems like the use of the model for, a generate, for generate trees according to the distribution, the strong consistency, and the application to a round tree. So, uh, one thing we're working on is uh, the when we have a, a model that is not a stochastic language, which is open before convergence in theory, and in practice when we have, a, for example, a sample of trees which is not uh, can be encoded by a Russian stochastic language. And we know that if we have some assumption, for example, this one, we can extract the probability distribution from the model and control it. I mean, we can generate things according to that, like we can show that it converges to the true one if we have more trees in the sample. So. We are nearly to fix this result, but we have nearly it. And the second point, maybe not the least, is that we are building a software which is developed, in fact, in the team of Lily. And we will provide an API for dealing with weighted to automata and the inference. So uh, once, I think we will really soon have the first version. So maybe you can use it and try it. Thank you. Um, Which one, the, the learning well, one? Or? Well, the, the, the new contribution, but I was mostly referring to the, the original one. So basically when you have to, uh, the hardest, yes, yeah, so the next slide, mm. yeah, the hardest part, I believe, is, is, yes. is, is this one. Yes. So uh, what is the efficiency for computing that this has no solution? Yes, so clearly this comes from the resolution of a linear uh, system of any questions, and this, right. well, we don't, you will just use sol solvers that do that. So I'm not a specialist, but I think that can be done in maybe quadratic time or things like that, depending on the implementations. But well, I think of, as a function of what? As a function of the number of, of variables, that means the number of states uh, that is currently done. Because in this algorithm, you don't start from a PTA and merging things. You start from one state, and you try to add a new state. So you add new states rather than dealing with all the states. So, so you, to the, the important part is to know if this tree is going down to this one. So to decide that, you will fix some variables here that you want to solve. Okay, and the number of variables depends on the number of uh, the elements that are in the basis, more or less. <coughs> so, so the complexity is uh, given according to the... Uh, well, but eventually the, the number of elements you would have at the basis correspond to the final number of yes, states. Yes, yes. So, but even for a given pair, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm trying to, to evaluate, to test for a given pair. Um, a given pair of what, sorry? Well, you, basically you want to know whether you have to add some states. Yeah, okay, not. okay. Yeah, you okay. are that, so one iteration of mm -hmm. category. So it doesn't seem, I mean, I'm not very familiar with that, but it doesn't seem trivial to find these coefficients. Uh, and also to prove that there's such coefficients do not exist with the precision of epsilon, which if I yes. say uh, correctly, it's, it's at the core of your algorithm. Yeah, OK. But what do you mean? You mean it's easy it means it's in linear time, or you mean? Well, it's easy. I think it's quite I, a general. Mean, proving that there is no, because you don't know the alpha t, I, I guess. No, but it's you have to discover that there is no such alpha t so yes. that your condition yes. is satisfied. Yes, yes, yes. This so, is the key. And you, you can do it efficiently? I mean, I mean, this is clearly a problem of optimization. So we have some people <laughs> right, that do it. You mean, it means that you have to solve an, an optimization yeah. problem at each given. Yeah, true, true, clear. So, I mean, the global complexity is is, uh, I mean, more or less cubic. I mean, it's the same as like the arguments like allergy or something like that. Okay, well, we'll discuss. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, so I have a question. Um, it seems like um, um, allowing negative coefficients has, uh, uh, causes, uh, it gives you some additional power, but it also causes some problems. Yeah. And I would expect also with, um, a numerical stability, since you're um, 
you know, since if you have some things which are, um, you know, they, they may be, you know, the matrix system you're solving may be uh, not singular, but might be very, very close to singular. So, I mean, have you, have you look, thought about looking at um, sort of non-negative matrix factorizations or regularizing the problem in some way to... No, to, no, but uh, no, we don't look at that. But one thing we're interested in is to, to see how it works, in, because we have a theoretical theorem which says, okay, if we have some, uh, from, uh, if you choose some parameters, we can convert from that. And we know that in general, the models are smaller than probabilistic automata. But in practice, we don't know how it scales and what happens. And in general, we think that we'll never reach the convergence. I mean, we not, may not have sufficient data to convert. So it means that the model we will have may not define a stochastic language in general. And maybe it's, this is the case. So the question is, how oh, it's worked, do, do the model, for example, gives parameters that are totally absurd. That means that we can't do anything with that. Or can we have something that can, we, can be controlled, as we said, it is the, this um, point, can we control the things? I mean, this is not a stochastic language, but anyway, we can manipulate it to extract distribution or to do something, or maybe it is not possible because we don't have enough data to find something which is relevant. But this is a good question, so that's the first step. And then maybe you can see what happens and try to, to define regularizations and have a look at that, but at the moment, no. Okay, let's have the second speaker.